Hey, this video is for trigonometric ratios. This is for IM2 uh, when we're covering Unit 7, Lesson 1, Investigations 2 and 3. All right, so let's start with a right triangle because that's what we've been studying. And we're going to name this right triangle ABC. And if you've noticed, every time we talk about corners or angles or the vertexes of a shape, we always use capital letters. And then for the sides, sometimes we'll call them AB or AC, but if we, if, if we don't want to do that and we want to use a, a shorter notation, we use lowercase letters. And the notation that we use is always the side opposite the angle gets that matching letter. So if I look at capital A, the side opposite that is going to be this side, and we'll call that little a. And the side opposite big B is down here, and we'll call that little b. And the side opposite C is little c. Okay, so what were our trig ratios? We started with sine, and let's look at sine A. So we're going to be looking at this angle down here. So sine A, we found uh, that the relationship was the opposite side over hypotenuse, over the hypotenuse. And in this case, the side opposite of angle A is side A, and the, opposite, and the hypotenuse is C. So we have A over C. Let's look at cosine of A. Well, cosine of A, we're going, uh, we, we remember, is adjacent side over the hypotenuse. All right, so and if we look at adjacent side, that's going to be side B uh, and B, so we get B over C. And then finally, we have tangent of A, and tangent is always opposite side over adjacent side. This seems to be everybody's favorite one to use. Everyone always likes using tangent. Um, so opposite over adjacent, and opposite is little a, adjacent is little b, so we have a over b. Okay. Um, so from this, you may recall or you may have heard in uh, prior classes or from older bro brothers or sisters or something along those lines, the term Sokotoa. And Sokotoa is just a way to remember these relationships. So the S in So goes with sine and the OH goes with opposite and hypotenuse. And the Ka, the C, goes with cosine and the AH goes with adjacent and hypotenuse. And then tangent is the, the T, and OA is opposite and adjacent. Okay, so the thing to keep in mind is that side, the side, little c is always going to be the hypotenuse. So when we're looking at adjacent sides, we're looking at the legs or the, the, the sides that are touching the right angle. The, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. We can never call the hypotenuse an adjacent side. Well, I, can't, I guess we could call it that, but when we're using this uh, mnemonic device to remember, hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Uh, it won't be a, an adjacent side. Okay, so let's look at sine B. So sine B, now we're looking at this angle up here. So sine B is going to be opposite over uh, hypotenuse, and, and now we're changing what opposite is. So now opposite side is little b, and adjacent side is little a. Hypotenuse is still hypotenuse. So sine b, sine b is going to be uh, b over c, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of b is going to be our adjacent over hypotenuse, or a over c, and tangent of b is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is B over A. And the big deal to remember with all of this Sokoto and all these opposite and adjacent means that we can change the direction that we're looking at the triangle. Before, we were always attaching it to the origin, so we're always looking from one angle or from one spot, always from angle A, but uh, if this were attached to the uh, unit circle, or uh, not the unit circle, I'm sorry, the, um, the uh, Cartesian plane. But now we can say, well, what if I want to look from angle B instead? Now I can reorient myself and I can come up with the same relationships without having to rotate my triangle around. So that's really the, the, the key thing that we're trying to get with you for this. The other big idea is how to use your calculator uh, to find some of these things. So if we're given an, uh, sorry, before we get into the example, let me remember, I almost forgot. 
we always have to make sure that we're in uh, our mode. We check our mode and that we're in degrees. Right now, all we've talked about is degrees. There's another measurement called radians, but we don't use radians. Uh, so if you're borrowing calculators, if you're switching them around, always check the mode button and make sure that you are in degrees. Make sure that that is highlighted. Okay, so now let's look at an example. So if we've got cosine of 45 degrees equals x, and we want to know what x is. Well, that's fairly straightforward. All we have to do is on our calculator, hit cosine, and then type in 45 degrees, or 45, hit enter, and we'll get the value for uh, cosine of 45 degrees. I don't have a calculator in front of me, otherwise i tell you what it is. Okay, so uh, cosine of theta equals 0 0.94. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find out what theta is. So we're trying to get theta by itself. And every time, whenever we're doing algebra and we're trying to get something by itself, we have to do the opposite or the inverse function. So if we've got, let's say, x plus 3 equals 10, the, uh, the inverse operation of plus 3 would be minus 3. If we had... Um, x over 3 equals 10, then we'd have to multiply because we're dividing when we have x over 3, so we're dividing. So the inverse uh, option of this, it's, it's kind of complicated, so we're just going to kind of cut to the chase with this. The inverse is just the inverse of cosine, so it's that little negative 1. And it's not an exponent, that just indicates that we're taking the inverse of cosine. So normally we would think of that as an exponent, but don't think of it as that now. For trigonometry, this is just showing that we're doing the inverse of cosine. So we're kind of separating cosine from theta. Okay, so to do this on our calculator, first thing we would do is we'd hit second, and then we would hit the cosine button, and that would give you that option for cosine, uh, inverse of cosine. So on your calculator, you'd see cosine negative 1. And we just type in our 0 0.94, hit enter, and we would get the degrees of theta. So let's put this into action. Let's look at an example or two. So we've got this first triangle. We've got theta. We've got sides 11 and 7, and we want to solve for theta. All right, so which sides do we have with, uh, with this? So if we're looking at theta, we've got our opposite side, and we have the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse uses the sine function. So we want to find sine of theta, which is going to be 7 over 11 opposite over adjacent. I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. So now we want to separate theta from sine. We cannot just divide by sine. We have to do our inverse of sine. So we're going to do this option down here at the bottom. So we'll do theta equals the inverse of sine of 7 over 11. And now we punch that into our calculator and theta will give us approximately 39.52 degrees. And we are done. That's, that's how you find the angle measurement. And that's also a good way to write it if you're showing your work. Uh, sine of theta equals 7 over 11, then theta equals inverse of sine 7 over 11, and then punch in your, your work into your calculator. Okay, let's look at another example. We've got another triangle. It's kind of uh, angled, uh, kind of tilted here. We've got 50 degrees. We've got a, one side is 12, and we have a little c, and we want to find little c. Okay, so what, we are, what information do we have? Well, if we're looking at 50 degrees, the first thing we have is our adjacent side. So it's the side connected to 50 degrees. And we also have our, or we're looking for our hypotenuse. So the one that uses adjacent and hypotenuse with an angle is our cosine. So we want to find cosine of 50 degrees, which is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12 over C. All right, so we can find what cosine of 50 degrees is just by punching into our calculator. We get 0 0.643, and that equals 12 over C. Now we need to solve for C. So just like I was talking about before, you want to do the opposite function. You want to do the inverse. So we have to get, we have to get C out of the denominator. So we multiply both sides of the equation by C. We get 0 0.643C equals 12. How do we undo those? How do we get those apart from each other? We divide. So we divide by 0 0.643 on both sides, and C is approximately 18.663 units, whatever, whatever uh, units we put on that. 
So those are the big ideas that we are looking for uh, for lesson, uh, investigations two and three of lesson one, unit seven. I hope this is, helps as a refresher for things, um, and I'll talk to you for the next toolkit.